You know what the first layer, the first barrier of your immune system is? It's your skin. It's your skin. Even before we start talking about gut health, even before we're talking about natural killer cells, if your skin is not intact, that is essentially open door for a virus, bacteria, for a fungi, for infection. Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. Welcome to the show. I am so excited to have today a friend of mine on the show, Dr. Eric Zielinski. And Dr. Eric, uh, I, I met Dr. Eric years ago, and um, he is a doctor of chiropractic. He is a trained aromatherapist. Also, here's one of the things I'm most impressed about Dr. Eric. He spent years in the field of research, researching herbs, essential oils, natural remedies, and other things. And I know he has a passion like I do to teach people how to use food as medicine, but also how to use herbs and spices and essential oils as, as our natural form of medicine. Another thing that I was so impressed with Dr. Eric uh, is he has pioneered natural living and also uh, biblical health education. Um, both him and his wife have really focused on te teaching people these principles of natural living, especially families. Okay. So I want to encourage you guys run over uh, as well. Check out his blog, check out his uh, social media pages. And I um, want to encourage you guys also check out, we're going to talk about his new book, but we're going to talk about everything essential oils today. So if you have an interest in knowing advanced information on essential oils and herbs and how to heal naturally, you're going to be excited for today's show. Dr. Eric, welcome. Well, Dr. Axe, thanks so much for having me, my friend. It's an honor and a privilege, and I, I just can't wait. I know this is something that, by the way, I'm going to give you a shameless plug. We wouldn't be talking today if you and I didn't co-host that Essential Oils Revolution Summit. Now what? Six years ago. I mean, it was a wonderful event. We had, what, 165,000 people, and it just right. propelled me and all this research and my passion, my life's work, really because of that event. Um, so folks, anyone who's read my books, gone on my blog, we give doc Dr. Josh all the credit for that. Amen. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, that was, that was fun. I know, you know, we co-hosted that, uh, the, the essential oils. And I, and I think at the time it was probably one of the first webinars or, uh, summits, you know, large online summit. That's right. We had 165,000 people online listening in. And that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. And so I know you and I both share that passion on oh, yeah. essential oils, talking also about ancient forms of medicine, including biblical medicine. And let's go and dive in. So, you know, one of the things that uh, Dr. Eric, I love is you are focused like I am on the root, right? The root yeah. cause. And one of the things I think that I've seen you talk about recently uh, or post about on your page, this was a little ways back, but you talked about this thing that's done in Japan, which I actually have done some research there and I'm like thrilled to get this message out there. I haven't talked yeah. about it yet. So I'm excited for you to forest bathing. Talk to me about this, um, you know, this thing that you talk about. I know you get into in your new book is forest bathing and sort of what this does for chronic inflammation and chronic disease. Well, Shinrin Yoku and what it is, it's essentially being out in nature. You know, Dr. Axe, one thing that we take for granted is being stuck very much so in this protective environment in our homes. And we take for granted for the fact that we have life-giving volatile, or, volatile organic compounds being emitted out into nature by just being outside. Like I have a diffuser right next to me and it emits the essential oils, those volatile organic compounds that we enjoy and love from lavender and rose and all those healing properties of herbs and spices like you mentioned. But being out in nature is actually how God designed it to begin with. Right, even before steam distillation was ever invented. So, what the Japanese do, they call it forest bathing. Has, and I want to clarify this because it's something that my son and I just did. Uh, we were just talking about our children just a few minutes ago before we got on the air. I have a brand new baby boy. His name is Ezekiel, love of my life, our fifth it. child. Um, and he is three months old. And so, I'll tell you, it's kind of a crummy day right now. It, it, it where I live right now, and it's just eh, not the best environment, kind of drizzly. A little cool. It's not one of those days where you just want to take off your shirt and sunbathe. But you know what? I just knew because I've been in, I've been inside a little bit too much the last few days because it's been raining and raining. I'm like, you know what? We're going to go out. So we bundled up. We got protected. I got the baby, put him on my baby Bjorn chest carrier. And we went out and we literally just, we just were, we were being, you know, again, we're human beings, not human doers. Think about this for a minute. Shinrin Yoku, just being outside. 
You're not exercising. You're not hiking. You're not doing anything to exert yourself. You're literally just outside, just enjoying the energy, the frequency, the healing properties of the plants in nature. And what we found ourselves, you know, being, being a Christian, I found myself just reading the Bible with my son, just out there, just enjoying, meditating, praying, just being out, worshiping. But more importantly, what ends up happening, the research has shown this, and it's all because of aromatherapy, because of the, those chemicals being emitted from the plants, your natural killer cells start to skyrocket, inflammation starts to soothe, and research has been done proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that being inside all day will have a deleterious effect on your health because of the inflammatory process. And we're saying this on the wake of what, where everyone's sheltering in place. And in a year in 2020, where people were not outside where they should have been. And that's why I'm so grateful for this ancient practice, because I literally reminded myself, you know, I got to get out there. I got to get out there because I don't want to be like most people, doc. And this is something most people don't know. 70 to 75% of most people's lives and even more now because of what's happened, are spent indoors. That's an inexorbitant amount of time. Just think about that. You live to be 100 years. That's 75 plus years of your life inside your cardboard box. And so it's like, and this is something really interesting too, Dr. X, is as I was researching Shinrin Yoku, Forest Bathing More, for my book, something hit me. And, and I got to say, I'm going to admit, this shocked me. I wasn't expecting this. They determined through blood samples, again, they evaluated people being out in nature, literally just being out in nature versus people with the same type of essential oil properties in their diffuser. So again, let's think about Douglas fir. Let's think about cedarwood. Let's think about pine, those tree, those, those rooty kind of oils. They put essential oils in a diffuser and then they just had people just be inside, just like they were outside. And they evaluated their natural killer cells. They looked at how inflammation measures were changing. They found that their body responded better to being outside than how the body responded indoors with the diffuser. So what's that mean? If you want the biggest bang for your buck, if you want the best inflammation soothing, immune boosting thing you could do in the aromatherapy space, go outside. And the second best thing is using essential oils. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to do both. I enjoy it outside. I enjoy it inside, but it's profound because you know what? God's wisdom has shown us that things taken in its natural form will always do better than anything that we create. I love it, Eric. You know, one of the things I, uh, so I, I, I actually, a book I wrote recently, I, I got into this too and talked a little bit about this because I think this is such a big deal. And one of the things I love about your book, your new book you have coming out is you get into this as well as how to use essential oils. So think about this in tears, guys. Number one, get outdoors. Number two, diffuse these natural essential oils in, indoors. So like Dr. Eric talked about the smell of pine, the smell of fur, the smell of uh, you know, obviously frankincense is a tree. Lavender is like you're in a field of flowers. Like number one, hey, get outside when you can. Number two, if you can't get outside, get some of those diffuse, essential oils diffusing in your house, cleansing the air. I think about this too, Dr. Rick. Every year, my wife and I have a family tradition. We brought Arwen for our, uh, you know, for our first time this year to mm -hmm. go and get a Christmas tree. And we always go and get a real Christmas tree and the whole, you know, the house starts to smell like that pine, you know, that, that great smell. We absolutely love it. And um, anyways, it just made me think of like, that's one example of us bringing some of those smell indoors, but this is such a powerful effect. I want to mention, I, I read a study, this was a 2018 study that said on average, Americans spend 93% of their time indoors. You think about what the ancients did, you know, they might've been living in tents or houses where there's natural airflow in and out. They were almost exposed 93% of the time outdoors. And now we're the flip ratio where it's like 7% of the time we're actually outdoors. And so anyways, I know this is such a big deal. And this practice you're talking about is something really that is practiced in Japan today. And they have the longest lifespan in the world. So anyways, I love this principle you're talking about. I'd love to hear from you personally. Like when you guys are diffusing, you and Sabrina and the family, like when you guys are diffusing essential oils indoors, what are some of your favorite essential oils that you guys use in, in the Zelensky household? Well, you know, Doc, it all depends on what we're trying to accomplish. So first thing, like right now, here I go. I'm actually diffusing those, those tree woodsy kind of oils. My, one of my favorite blends is Douglas fir and orange. I just love how it just complements each other. It's a synergy blend that just 
makes me feel rooted, grounded. And we know orange is a proven antidepressant. You know, I already t- talked about the, the immune boosting and the inflammation soothing properties of Douglas fir and other tree oils. But, you know, I don't want anything to do with lavender right now. I, I don't want to be calm. I don't want to, I don't want to be in that parasympathetic state because I don't want to make people fall asleep on me when I'm speaking and when I'm, I'm, we're teaching and we're educating. So it's all about the context. So what we do is we look at what we're trying to accomplish in that, in that moment. So the first thing in the morning, what we do on the children is we basically, we anoint them with oil. We get them out the door. We use a body oil. And our, one of our favorite is a joyful blend with orange and vanilla. And we just send them out. And who doesn't like the smell of a dreamsicle or a creamsicle, right? When you were a kid or maybe you ate that sort of thing. But vanilla and orange just has a wonderful, again, proven yeah antidepressive, anxiety-busting property. But that's how we start the day. And Sabrina, she's one of those. She wakes up at at the crack of dawn before um, the children get up, and she does her high-intensity interval training at the local gym. And she has um, spearmint and rosemary and eucalyptus in in, in an inhaler. So she'll smell that to give her a natural boost so she doesn't rely on coffee or on espresso. Well, at night, that's kind of where we bring back the lavender. We love our deep sleep blend. Actually, my upcoming book, we have a whole chapter on the importance of sleep because you really can't be healthy if you're not sleeping well. And so our favorite blend is vetiver, Roman chamomile, and lavender, equal parts of that. We'll put that into our diffuser. We'll put that into our body oil. But again, it's what are you trying to accomplish at the given part of the day? And we just enhance our life. And the thing is, I'll leave folks with this. And I know you you know this, Doc, is that we have more control than what most people think. And you say that now, again, on the wake of 2020, where it seemed like everything was out of control. I'll tell you, the truth of the matter is, even when all hell was breaking loose and everyone around us was freaking out and, and people didn't know you're stuck in your home, whatever, we knew that we can control our environment. We knew that we could create an atmosphere that we wanted to be in. And that really starts with what we smell. And on the flip side, this is a strong warning to anyone, inadvertently, her harming themselves with synthetic fragrances. Please, 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 anything. Aerosols, plugins, chemicals in your cleaning body care. I can't stress enough. I can't stress enough what that does to your body at a cellular level, linked to Alzheimer's, cancer, dementia, it's autoimmune conditions. You got to get rid of those fake smells because on the flip end, natural smells can be life-giving. The synthetic can literally be deadly. Well, I'll say this. One of the things you, you and Sabrina, you guys have great blends. And I, you know, I know I said, thank you on text message, but uh, you sent Chelsea and I these, uh, this great blend of body butters, um, one of them had, I could tell the orange and vanilla scent. We had another one that had more of a floral scent and, uh, and we've been using those. I mean, those are the best body butters we've ever used. So you guys are great mixologists <laughs> and herbologists there with what you've yeah. done yeah, in those you. mixes. I want to say this too, what I love, you know, when you look at something like, and again, I'm talking about a lot of what I talked about in my audience here. These are ancient forms of medicine. Certain essential oils are better to use at certain times of year, certain parts of the day. So, you know, in Chinese medicine in the winter, using the woodsy oils like the fur, like if you to be outside, those are some of the most important oils to use in the winter time versus there's also your body clock, right? And then lavender and floral oils like chamomile are best to use at night. So anyways, I love even your recommendations naturally are right in line with, hey, the time of year, what you should be doing, of course, these citrus oils, a lot of people are at risk for seasonal uh, depression, right? Seasonal mood disorders. Yep. And so doing those citrus oils, so perfect in vanilla for uplifting your mood, overcoming, uh, you know, the, those sort of issues. And of course, getting outside, it's not just vitamin D either. I want to, I want to just go through this point that you're saying, just, just to make sure everybody caught this. When you're outside, you are smelling essential oils. When you're smelling grasses and bushes and trees yep. and all of these things, though, that's what you smell is these oils with these healing properties. So that's why Dr. Eric is saying, Hey, get outside, practice, practice that, uh, Japanese, uh, you know, the Japanese forest bathing, I think it's uh, Shinrin Yoku and all of the benefits there. So, so fantastic. All right. So Dr. Eric, I wanted to ask you about this. You know, one of the things that, again, I mentioned you and you sent Chelsea and I this amazing and Sabrina, you sent us this great stuff for our skin. 
Talk to me about, I talk a lot about the gut microbiome. I know that you're really educated there as well, but I want you to talk about the skin biome, right? Or, or the importance of our skin microbiome, because today, one of the things that people are doing, especially in the wake of what's happened in 2020, I see people over sanitizing now. It's like, there's a balance there and using essential oil. So anyways, I don't want to talk about, I want to give you time to talk, but just to say, talk to me about the skin microbiome. Also talk to me about toxicity and what we should be putting on our skin. Yeah, remember, remember, Josh, when I don't know when it was maybe a decade ago when leaky gut was cutting edge and, and no one really was talking about it. Some medicine circles were denying its existence, but we know now for sure intestinal permeability is a is a definite, definite thing. Um, there's something called leaky skin. It actually is. Challenge everyone. Go to Google, DuckDuckGo, type up leaky skin, and you'll see more and more and more doctors and researchers talking about this. And the reality is I know people that are listening right now, you've educated them so well on leaky gut. I'm just going to flip it on its head. It's the same exact concept. It's the same exact concept as leaky gut. But instead of dealing with the microvilli on the intestines, we're dealing with micro tears in the skin. Now, why are we even talking about the skin? Why is the skin even important? And especially in the wake of 2020. And this is why I focus so much about this because we know that 2020 is going to repeat itself in one way or another. The medical profits and the researchers are saying, whether it's COVID-19 or COVID-20 or whatever it's going to be, we're going to continue having you know, outbreaks. We're going to continue having concerns. We're going to continue having different forms of viruses. So we need to be prepared. This was a wake up call for the world. And one of the reasons why so many people got sick the way that they did was because your immune system was essentially just dampened. And what is the immune system? Well, you know what the first layer, the first barrier of your immune system is? It's your skin. It's your skin. Even before we start talking about gut health, even before it's talking about natural killer cells, if your skin is not intact, that is essentially open door for a virus, bacteria, for a fungi, for infection, for infection. So that's why when you saw, you know, I'm thinking back to the vaccine trials where the people were in hazmat suits. Like that's why when you're in a laboratory experiment, these people, when you're in a potentially dangerous situation, you're in a legit hazmat suit. You do not want your skin to be in potential, even contact with anything that could be deadly. So I want you to think about that, folks. Not that well, I'm going to walk around with a hazmat suit, but you know what your hazmat suit is? It's your skin. That's why we need to nourish it properly. But the problem is, because again, just like our gut, um, our skin is made up of trillions and trillions of cells and a bacteria. I mean, we are, we are living, breathing symbiosis with nature, bacteria, with fungi, with viruses. We are a wonderful cornucopia of all that. So the problem that people have fallen themselves into is that you mentioned, and I'm so glad you did, over sanitation. And one of the greatest misnomers to this whole discussion that we've had from the very beginning is cleaning too much, sanitizing too much. People are sanitizing their groceries. Every time they touch a doorknob, they're putting hand sanitizer on their face. Obsess essentially, what we did was we created an obsession, um, obsessive compulsory disorder on people. And I've got to tell you, Doc, I was addicted long ago to hand sanitizer. And I call it addicted because it was a compulsory moment. Every time I touch a hand or I go touch a doorknob or something, I had to have my hand sanitizer on me. Did you know, and you, you'll know this when your daughter gets older, but you know what's on most schools supply list? Yeah, paper, pencils, stuff. You know what? Hand sanitizer. It's like an absolute core ingredient to school. You can't even send your kid to school without hand sanitizer anymore. It's like part of the list. And what we're doing is we're drying the skin. And if you're not making your own hand sanitizer, which we do essential oil based, then what you're doing is you have toxic, potentially toxic chemicals, namely triclosan, which has been a registered pesticide yeah. since 1969, which again has been linked to neurocognitive disorders, cancer, autoimmunity. We're talking, if you want a button that will flip on inflammation, if you want a button that will start a disease process, you're going to put chemicals on your skin. And because the skin is going to allow certain chemicals to penetrate in and of itself because it's porous. But when your skin is dried and damaged because of the products that we use, because of just wear and tear and abuse, 
it allows more chemicals into the bloodstream. And so what we're finding is more and more research indicating that if you have an inflammation problem, quite frankly, who doesn't anymore? If you have an inflammation problem, it starts with the skin and it starts with what you do. And again, we just spoke a few minutes ago of like, hey, if you have aerosols or plugins or synthetic fragrances, well, throw that stuff away. The same thing for your body care and the same thing for your cleaning products. To us, doc, essential oils aren't like a magic bullet. Essential oils are a way of life. And like you mentioned with, with Chinese medicine and using certain herbs and oils and roots and things throughout the seasons, well, what we'll do is we'll have like a seasonal approach. The same oils that are in our diffusers are the same oils that are in our skincare, our lotions, our potions, and all the things around the house. So you go, it's themed. It's themed. And it, I'll tell you one thing. This is overwhelming for a lot of people. It really is. I mean, like you, you look at what you've done. Doc and your wife, look at what my wife and I have done. I've been living this way for about 19 years, yeah. 19 years. So you, someone says, okay, well, where do I start? It's paralysis by analysis. You know what we do? We set up little systems to make things easier. So, Hey, this is the month again, going back to what you said, let's say it's winter time and we're following Chinese medicine seasons. And like, okay, this is the tree month, right? This is the pine month where we're going to put pine and tree and frankincense because we want to capitalize on our natural circadian rhythm on every aspect of life. So let's put that in our diffusers, our body care, our lotions. And it makes things easy because you could start predicting what you're doing, like proper planning prevents poor performance. That's why we have so many recipes and things that people compare ahead of time. So you're not chasing afterwards wondering, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think one of the things that's so important is this aspect of simplicity. One of the things that I, you know, when, when I'm teaching, a, especially a group of people that are new, one of the things I tell them is, listen, don't, you don't have to change your whole diet overnight. Just change breakfast, you know, just yes. start there. You know, I think for a lot of people just order some basic essential oils, just start using them on a daily basis. Maybe the first step is, Hey, if you want to sanitize things, Use a natural hand sanitizer. Start there with essential oils and just start diffusing some that you like. What do you think are the most important essential oils? If somebody says, hey, I want to I want to start off with some essential oils. What do you think some of those, you know, some of the most important essential oils are for people to start with? I want to mention this for everybody too. Uh, Dr. Zelensky here has two great books out. One is called The Healing Power of of essential oils, guys. So the healing power of essential oils. And he goes through a lot of this in there. And he also has a new book out called The Essential Oils Apothecary. And the subtitle is Soothing Remedies for Anxiety, Pain, High Blood Pressure, and Other Chronic Conditions. But it really goes through how to use essential oils to balance your hormones, improve your digestion, overcome chronic pain, improve your brain and mood, all of those things in these two books. And you can simply go to amazon.com and search Dr. Eric Zelensky. If you ter ter uh, type in Dr. Eric with a C, Z, it should just go ahead and populate for you on Amazon. You can also go to Barnes and Noble and bookstores nationwide. But again, that's if you want to get more advanced, I highly suggest you check out his book. But just to get people started here, Dr. Eric, what are some of those key essential oils you think that everybody should have on hand, maybe five or six that are good to start with? You know, Doc, I want to remember those times. And you remember what it was like being a broke college student. I'll never forget. I'll never yeah. forget just how tough things were making ends meet. Um, I want to think budget in mind. So at one point I could say frankincense, but mostly people would see frankincense. Some people be out of their budget. Um, it might be one of the pricier oils. I love it. But what about the oils that people kind of gloss over because they're cheaper than the others? I'm going to go to the budget friendly oils because out of all the oils that I, that I've used that I've, I've consumed by the way, because we could talk about ingesting them properly. Orange oil stands out always on top. Out of all the oils on the market, I think everyone should be using oils orange on a regular basis. Like you mentioned uh, the joyful body butter my wife made for you. It's like you, you have to be intentional not to feel better when you're around orange oil. See, orange oil has one of the richest concentrations of a chemical known as limonene. Limonene is a heavily researched chemical, a heavily researched compound shown to literally kill cancer cells soothe inflammation and boost mood. There have been study after study about the antidepressive, um, anti-anxiety properties of 
orange essential oil. So I think that's a great one. And it's also wonderful to put like a drop of orange oil in your morning smoothie. It's wonderful for food, um, a lot of different preparations to have. And if you're looking for something with a little more punch to it, that's where clove oil comes into play. Uh, um, some research studies have shown that clove oil has more, I mean, out of all different um, properties of fruits and vegetables and herbs and spices, clove oil has some of the highest antioxidant properties of any food, of any sort of consumable, of any sort of anything on the planet. So, I mean, think of it in terms, we all like blueberries, wonderful organic wild blueberries have a wonderful ORAC value, ORAC meaning a measure of antioxidants. But some research has suggested that clove oil has literally a hundred times more antioxidants, just a drop, just a drop. So if you're trying to fight infection, if you're trying to fight any sort of um, any sort of sickness at all, you got to have clove oil. And, you know, some of our mutual friends and colleagues, entodontists, dentists, like clove oil is what they used to use to put on oral cavities for before, pre and during post-surgery yeah. to help with infection as well. Um, and it's also tasty having a drop of clove in a wonderful like latte. Again, you always need a fatty substance. You just don't want to drop a drop a clove in your mouth, you'll burn your mouth, but having a fatty substance like a coconut milk or almond milk or coconut oil is a great way of ingesting clove. It's very tasty. It's one of the favorite pumpkin pie spices uh, for those who live in America. And by the way, I don't know if you knew this, but people listening in Australia, they're maybe not familiar with pumpkin pie spice. It's something that I've gotten out of all my interviews. People are like, what's that pumpkin pie spice? Well, it's clove, it's nutmeg, it's cinnamon, it's ginger, but all those are great digestive healing and yeah. the essential oil as well. Another one would be peppermint. We'll end with peppermint. So orange, clove, and peppermint, by the way, all three of them mixed together are fabulous mm. for tooth, um, for tooth, or for oral health, um, for tooth decay. But peppermint has this uncanny ability to act like a shot of espresso. It literally helps increase your breathing. I mean, it's, it's like legal blood doping. And I say that tongue in cheek because research studies have shown just literally put a drop of peppermint in your mouth or put some peppermint with a fatty substance and drink it with some water has been shown to increase VO2 mask, um, VO2 max athletic performance and actually help college athletes perform better. So again, what are you going to run to? Are you going to run to that energy drink, that monster drink, which is horribly addictive and has been linked to heart attacks and suicide for children? Like I, my heart is broken at the, the literal research connecting energy drinks like monster drinks to suicide in teenagers. Um, how do we flip that on its head? How do we naturally get energy? And having peppermint is a wonderful way of giving yourself a good boost. I love it. Those are great recommendations. I think those three oils have served so many purposes, so many benefits. So again, I, I love that. So let, let's talk about this. One of the things I know that you and your wife um, practice as Chelsea, Chelsea and I do is we're very conscious about our relationship with God and prayer uh, and, 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 you know, and meditating on, uh, you know, positive uh, and powerful um, things like, you know, I, I, the, the, I, I regularly meditate on, you know, first Corinthians 13, you know, uh, on th that chapter on love and also Psalms 23 and Matthew six and many others. So I'd love to hear from you how you guys use essential oil to support your mind and spirit. Yeah, that's, a, you know, that was a profound revelation for me, Doc. I, I didn't get it at first. I, I, I didn't connect at first when I first started this, this lifestyle of living healthy as much as I could. I never considered that my emotional, um, my emotional feelings could manifest to a, a, a physical ailment. Um, until, you know, my new book, The Essential Oils Apothecary, it, it dawned on me very simply is that inflammation is the primary root cause of chronic disease. You know, that's why we talk about inflammation in the very first chapter. Before you even discuss cancer, diabetes, obesity, you got to get inflammation. Well, what about the inflammation that's caused by toxic thoughts? Mm. And that's where this concept of emotional detoxification hit me. I'm like, wow. And the number one thing, and this is proven by the research, is the physical ramifications of living in a state of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness wow. has been linked to chronic fatigue, chronic pain, and especially fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is an interesting, is an interesting disease for a number of reasons. It, it's, and not to take away from anyone who's been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but it's essentially 
you can't prove that anyone has fibromyalgia. It, it's a disease based off of the symptoms that someone has. And it's changed. It's like, okay, you need to have random pain in 12 spots, eight spots, four spots. It's like, like almost like diabetes. What level is that magic level of glucose? What's that level of hypertension to make sure you, that your millimeters per mercury is too high for your heart? So fibromyalgia is almost like this junk all term that medicine came up with to figure out, hey, you just have chronic pain scattered throughout your body. We don't know why. One of the reasons why is unforgiveness. And research has shown that walking people through an emotional detoxification program of forgiving people, feeling like you've been wronged, like who hasn't been wronged, right? Yeah. Feeling like you've been wrong, harboring unforgiveness can manifest to having multiple pain states throughout your body. And so when I'm writing in my book about chronic fatigue and chronic um, pain, which are basically synonymous, um, unforgiveness was one of the first things I, I addressed because how many of us need to do a little bit of work? And so this is where coming back to the, 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 the spiritual practice, it's like, how do you love others as you love yourself if, if you have a state of self-loathing? Meaning, do you hate yourself? Do you look at yourself in the mirror and say, wow, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm a failure, I've done this, I've done that. Do you need to forgive yourself mm -hmm. of something, of some things? Like this whole state of why are we even talking about this in an essential oil discussion? Well, I got a little hack for you. Essential oils work regardless if you want them to. You know, some, and I've been there, when I was addicted to narcotics, doc, I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. I was, I was an alcoholic. I was addicted to self-infliction. I'll never forget smoking. I'll never forget doing drugs, doing drugs, knowing I was hurting myself, knowing, and I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. There was this place of self-infliction. I didn't deserve better. I didn't love myself enough. Well, getting to that point where I needed something to feel better, and that's where the drugs came into play. Well, let me give you a healthy way of feeling better. If you're in that mindset, like I was, where you don't think you're worthy, where you don't think that you deserve to feel better, maybe you don't want to feel better like I didn't. Maybe you don't want to feel better. Maybe you purposely are doing something to hurt yourself. If you diffuse essential oils, if you apply them topically in the ways that we show you in some of the ways that we discussed here, guess what happens? Your body responds regardless of your stubbornness or your bad attitude. It's like you're forcing yourself to get a dopamine serotonin rush and you don't want to. So it's like you got, so you know what the funny thing is? That's funny thing, but this is kind of where it's like, okay, what does your house look like? Are you living with a curmudgeon? Do you have a spouse or a child or a loved one that is just a Debbie Downer all the time? Well, you know what? You could change that person's mood, even though they don't want to be changed. Start diffusing some citrus oils. Proven, proven to help you, to help you feel better, help you have a good, a good neurotransmitter hormone rush in a positive way. So I say that to say, you could kind of tap into that, not fake it till you make it, but it's one of those things where you could use, one of those things to help you feel better. But one thing too, you and I have a mutual friend, Dr. Tony Jimenez, right? From the Hope for Cancer Clinic. And one thing Dr. Tony does with all of his patients, again, here's the context, cancer treatment. We're talking cancer treatment. All of his patients go through an emotional recall healing therapy session, multiple. And I know Dr. Leslie who administers that therapy session. And you know what she's got next to her? Aromatherapy. Here's why. I want to give you a little tip. The aromatherapy works through the olfactory system and has a direct impact on your limbic system, your, your mood, your memory, your emotions. All right. So if you want to imprint your brain, literally imprint your brain to feel better, to a state of healing, you start to diffuse essential oils. And your brain will remember, like you mentioned earlier about how it just made you think about, oh, you remember, we're just having a conversation and you go back five, six, seven months ago to when you're picking a Christmas tree with your kid. That's how powerful smell is. That's how powerful the memory is. So what if you're going through a state right now where you're going through healing, where you're practicing forgiveness, you're praying, you're worshiping, you're practicing gratitude, like you're being very intentional. 
You're being very intentional about your healing here. Well, let me give you a tip. Have some aromatherapy with you as an anchor to be an anchor for the rest of your life. So now let's say we just choose lavender. It's your nighttime ritual to end your day with a gratitude journal. Maybe you go through some forgiveness practices. You go through just a prayer and worship meditation practice. You have lavender with you while you're ending the day off on a positive note. Five, six, seven years ago when crap hits the fan, and I guarantee you it will, I guarantee you something will happen where it'll put you in a funk. There will be a moment, a traumatic instance, a someone cut you off on the, on the road or a loved one dies. Well, you go back to that imprint. You go back to that lavender Mm -hmm. that reminds your brain. Again, this is way beyond you. We all know about muscle memory. I'm talking about brain memory. It'll bring you back to the place of healing, that place of gratitude, the place of joy. And I share that to say a warning because some people doc, and this is something that really shocked me until I learned about the physiology and about the brain chemistry. Some people get uneasy when they're around certain smells. Some people feel anxious, depressed. I mean, here am I, I'm a junkie. I love these essential oils, but some people, when they smell an orange or they smell something, it creates a negative impulse to them. And they're like, why? The first thing is to say, well, the oil's fake. It's adulterated, it's bad. Well, maybe, but what if something happened to you? This is why I cover trauma in my book. What if something happened to you and you had an experience, a negative experience, and there was a smell in the environment, that smell can leave an imprint on your brain through neuroplasticity to trigger that PTSD, to trigger that anxiety. So when you're going through these emotional recall healing and emotional detoxification, you could go as deep as you're willing to go. But remember, smell can trigger something. And if that's the case, you might need to go through a state of healing around that smell that triggers something anxious. So it's super, extremely powerful and potent. Again, the power is in our hands in a lot of ways here. Yeah, I love this. This is a, uh, a topic. I, actually, I interviewed uh, a friend of mine here in Nashville. His name is Dr. Alex Lloyd. And Dr. Lloyd wrote mem- the memory codes. And it's really in this. A lot of times we think, okay, it's an emotion I'm experiencing, but the root of a lot of emotions are memories. you know. And so he talks about essentially doing a memory transplant rather than a heart or a lung transplant. It's a literally a memory transplant where you're saying you discover that first memory when you had that feeling of resentment or unforgiveness or whatever it is. And you are then forgiving the person, but you're also essentially replacing that thought with a new thought. So anyways, it's powerful stuff. I know when you think about memories, how much that affects all of us today still it's, um, you know, it really impacts us. I know essential oils can be a great part of healing, but also the thing you're talking about is you have to go and address that root emotion. When did it start? And you need to start healing. And again, that, that starts with forgiving yourself and then also forgiving others and moving forward. And, you know, bringing this back to one of the things you're totally right in, in Chinese medicine and biblical medicine and Ayurveda, all these forms of ancient medicine, unforgiveness is the root cause of autoimmune disease. Uh, yes. today. And so it's this, it's your, so the thing about what autoimmune disease is, it's your body attacking itself. And so emotionally, if you're attacking yourself or you have, you feel like someone else has attacked you and you haven't let it go, you're still letting them attack you. What you're talking about just makes so much sense there in terms of if you're going to heal, use essential oils, but also you, we have to go through these practices of emotional, spiritual, and memory healing in that way. Dr. Eric, I want to ask you just a couple more questions here. Well, hey, if I could say one thing though about this, but Dr. X, you don't know what they did to me. Dr. Eric, you don't know what happened to me. Doctor, this is unforgivable. I'll leave you with this. This is the most important thing you might've heard all day, all year. Having unforgiveness in your heart is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to be injured. Never forget that. It's for you. That's why it's a biblical mandate. If you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. Just know you are worth it. And forgiveness doesn't mean you have to spend Thanksgiving dinner with that person. Forgiveness means you let go. Get it off your balance sheet and put it on the gods. And it's not worth it. It's not worth it. We're not making an allowance for it. We're not making excuses for it. But you're worth it. Let it go. Anyway, thank you so much for that. So powerful. So good. It is so powerful. 
Hey guys, a lot of people ask me what supplements I take regularly, and one of the top three products I take every single day is SBO Probiotics from Ancient Nutrition. It's the whole food supplement brand I co-founded with Jordan Rubin. Now, I talk about my passion for SBOs, also known as soil-based organisms frequently. In general, SBO probiotics are so important because they are shelf-stable probiotics that are naturally resistant to the harsh environment of our upper digestive tract and our stomach. Now, Ancient Nutrition's SBO probiotics support a healthy digestive system and your immune system. The women's also has clinically studied ashwagandha, which provides support for healthy energy, reduced fatigue, and more. Plus, we add superfoods and herbs for an extra boost. And by the way, that's key. The herbs with the probiotics together, that's the ancient way to create a healthy gut and digestive system. Check out Ancient Nutrition's SBO Probiotics online or in store today. Um, so Dr. Eric, I do want to hit on this. We, we talked about this. Um, you mentioned just a, a little bit about this, but I, I want to, you may, and maybe we should have talked about this at the beginning, but I want you to just talk about for a minute, what are essential oils? Why are they so, but specifically, wh why are they so effective? How do they work with, within our bodies? You know, let's go to Willow. And we all know Hippocrates went to Willow and he knew the anti-pain properties of Willow, but, but there, there's a chemical, there's a salicylate chemical in Willow that we know is proven as an analgesic. Well, what, what happens, this is a plant-based compound, right? What happens when the chemist, the pharmacist get this compound and they manufacture it synthetically, they put a shiny white coating on it. They call it aspirin. Well, what we're talking about here is true medicine. It's not like chemists and pharmacists invent chemical structures in a vacuum. I mean, seriously, it's not like Bayer is waking up like the lead pharmacist in R&D isn't waking up and head, I had a revelation. Let's create these nitrogens and chemicals and these, these carbons in the a structure. So what we see, every drug today being administered is based off the chemical compounds that we see in plants. I'm talking chemotherapy. I'm talking blood, pr blood pressure um, I'm balancing. I'm talking every single drug is based off of the chemical structure from one form or another. The difference is, is it natural or synthetic? So the long and the short of it is our body is filled, our cells are filled and surrounded by receptors. And the right chemical compound is like a lock and key mechanism that opens up the cells and opens up to release hormones and neurotransmitters. What a drug does, it's basically like a, uh, um, it's like a key missing a tooth. It can get in the receptor, but it can't open the door perfectly. And that happens over a series of years, months, and the body ends up becoming hesitant. The body becomes toxic. The body doesn't know how to respond because the body can't work with this lock and key mechanism where essential oils and herbs and spices and plants, they have the right mechanism. So why am I mentioning it? Well, because this is plant-based medicine in its purest form. And technically they're known as volatile organic compounds, volatile meaning they evaporate. But like you said, you're outside in a lavender field, you're smelling the blades of the grass. These are chemicals being emitted from the plants that interact with our nose. I mean, they, you can't see them, you can't touch them, you can't really taste them, but they're floating. They're all over the place all the time. And we hear VOCs, and, and I guess I'll end with this, is I want to not freak people out because anyone in our space, Doc, looks up VOCs, they're thinking about off-gassing, they're thinking about carpet, and they're thinking about chemicals. Well, there are good VOCs and bad VOCs. Oils are the good ones. Oils are the natural ones. But essentially, going back to aspirin, going back to the fact that World War I and World War II combat medics, before the antibiotic was invented, they were using clove and tea tree and lavender on the battlefield to prevent gangrene and infection. This is plant-based medicine in its pure form. And it's super concentrated. So when you get a bottle of like this size, you're looking at like five to six pounds of lavender. And that's where it's hard to conceptualize. Because when you put a lavender blossom or a flower in your hand, imagine like five pounds of that. It's an unbelievable amount of plant matter that once you steam distill, it becomes super concentrated. That's why we have to use them properly. So it's a wonderful, wonderful healing mechanism that we believe should be part of a natural living lifestyle with your recommendations, herbs and 
spices and food and exercise. If, if, if you want a bang for your buck, if you want true medicine, essential oils, in my opinion, are the first place to go. Yeah, I love it. And I think, you know, one, one of the greatest ways to describe them are they're one of the most powerful forms of plant-based medicine. As Dr. Eric's talking about here, we have, you know, up, in, up until 150 years ago, when somebody used the term medicine, they were talking about herbs, spices, mushrooms, and essential oils. This is what people were talking about, or this is what people were using throughout history. You know, even you go to certain areas today and you go to an apothecary. And so, and again, apothecary was like an ancient pharmacy that carried herbs, spices, essential oils, glandulars, mushrooms, these things that are these powerful forms of medicine and essential oils were known as probably the most potent form of all of those types of medicine. And they've been used for thousands of years now as well. I want to encourage everybody, check out Dr. Eric's new book. It's actually called The Essential Oils Apothecary. And it's essentially how to use these essential oils as a powerful form of plant-based medicine. And also uh, he really gets into a lot of what he talked about today, forest bathing, overcoming trauma in your life, and really focusing on healing yourself emotionally, spiritually, working on the mindset, but it really dives deep into using essential oils as this powerful form of medicine. And again, you can go and check out the new book, The Essential Oils Apothecary here by Dr. Eric Zielinski and his wife, Sabrina Zielinski. You can find that on amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com and bookstores nationwide. Well, Dr. Eric, I want to say, hey, uh, thanks for being a good friend, man. It's uh, And thanks for the great interview. Again, I'm always excited to talk about uh, essential oils. And any uh, any closing thoughts? Doc, I appreciate you. I appreciate your work. And folks, coming off the wake of what was arguably the most challenging year in most people's memory, just know you have everything at your fingertips. Food is medicine. Essential oils are medicine. Healing emotionally is medicine to you. So it's been an honor and a privilege to walk on this journey with you, Doc. And, and I just want you to know, people, everyone listening, that you have everything at your disposal to live a healthy, abundant life. God bless. And love you lots. Awesome. Hey, thanks everybody for listening. I'll be back next week with another show. And thanks again to Dr. Eric Zielinski for talking about the power of essential oils. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.